Well, this was a video I never wanted to make. On January 29th, 2024, it was reported by Bloomberg's Jason Schreier that 97 people had been laid off from game developer Eidos Montreal at the behest of its parent company, Embracer Group, and also cancelled their new Deus Ex game that was two years in development. And this news was greatly upsetting to me. I know it's probably a little late to comment on it, but this is personal enough to me that I wanted to get some thoughts off my chest regardless. For those who don't know, the Deus Ex series has been in a state of tumult for pretty much as long as it's existed, but it's been especially bad in recent years. The first game was created by Ion Storm Austin in 2000 and is rightfully hailed as one of the best games of all time and a landmark in immersive sim design, with praise particularly going to its open-ended approach to game design that resulted in emergent gameplay, highly immersive and reactive world, campy, conspiracy-laden story, and intelligent social commentary on the state of the world that only ages better and better as time passes. It wasn't a huge financial success, but did well enough to warrant a sequel, and it cultivated a dedicated fanbase. This was the very first immersive sim that I was ever introduced to, and I was blown away by the intricacy behind its design. It made me realize that I was in love with this small grouping of games that shared a legacy. The second game, Invisible War, was a massive downgrade in basically all respects, having been technologically compromised due to the demand of publisher Eidos for it to be made with Xbox in mind, resulting in smaller maps that didn't complement Deus Ex's gameplay, as well as other compromises in quality. While I think it's a fine enough game on its own, as a sequel to the phenomenal first, it's understandably disappointing, and it didn't meet the publisher's critical or sales expectations. Ion Storm closed up shop shortly after, and Deus Ex as an IP went dormant for several years. Attempts were made at reinvigorating the franchise, including the ill-fated spin-off Clan Wars by Crystal Dynamics, which was eventually reworked into Project Snowblind, but no official games came out for seven years. That is, until new life was breathed into it by Eidos Montreal, the new studio formed under publisher Square Enix, who came to own the Deus Ex IP after a series of company acquisitions. This came in the form of the 2011 reboot-slash-prequel game Deus Ex Human Revolution. In their debut game, Eidos Montreal had seemingly done the impossible and brought this franchise back from the dead. While modernizing the gameplay, Eidos still made efforts to maintain the immersive sim design that made Deus Ex such a memorable play experience in the first place, and helped usher in a new generation of immersive sims in the 2010s, alongside Arcane Studios. After the disappointment that was Invisible War, Human Revolution was lauded by both critics and audiences alike, being seen as the true return of Deus Ex. While I have my own problems with the game, specifically some breaks in immersive sim design philosophy and a lack of subtlety in the story and themes compared to what was present in the Ion Storm games, I still love the experience with all my heart and was craving more. But this was where the trouble started. Development had begun on a sequel to Human Revolution, and it was clear that publisher Square Enix was trying to make Deus Ex their new premier franchise, at least in the West, their Call of Duty if you will. Branding it the Deus Ex Universe, they released tie-in books, comics, and a mobile spin-off to Human Revolution which ended on an unresolved cliffhanger because they never bothered to continue the story. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. They made a big deal of the franchise's 15th anniversary, inviting in the original Deus Ex's creative director, Warren Spector, to do a video where he played the first level of the original game with some Eidos Montreal employees and reflected on its development. Then came the increasing trickle of strange news about the new game, Mankind Divided, which caused controversy after controversy. First was the Augment Your Pre-Order fiasco, an attempt at tiered rewarding based on how many pre-orders the game got, which was swiftly met with player backlash and subsequently cancelled by Square Enix, instead offering all of the bonuses at once. Then there was the continuous marketing disaster of insisting on using phrases like mechanical apartheid and Aug Lives Matter, which mainly spoke to the unsubtle nature of how the game's themes attempted at drawing parallels to real-world racism and discrimination. Discovered post-release was also the use of microtransactions in the single-player game, seemingly added at the last minute at the behest of the publisher. But all of that was nothing compared to the single biggest piece of meddling on behalf of Square Enix. The game was released in 2016, and while it wasn't a critical darling like Human Revolution, it was still received relatively positively. I think it improved on most aspects from that game, relying on more realistic level design and taking control away from the player far less often than its predecessor. The hub world of Prague was impressively intricate and detailed, being fairly small but dense. The art style and music made the atmosphere feel truly unique, even more so than the yellow-filtered Human Revolution. The main storyline wasn't great, but the side quests were really interesting. And while the subtlety of the story and themes didn't improve much from the last game, in some ways even getting a little worse, I still appreciate the effort that was put in to make the conflict happening in this fictional universe feel visceral and intense. By all accounts, this sounds like a perfect sequel to Human Revolution, and I'd even go so far as to say that was my second favorite immersive sim to come out in the 2010s, behind Arcane's Prey. So, what was the problem? The ending. The ending was the problem. 
Mankind Divided ends right in the middle of its own story, and it turns out that was by design, or rather, by mandate of corporate meddling. Square Enix had Eidos Montreal split Mankind Divided in half, so they could develop and sell the sequel as a separate product. Already this is greedy and scummy on its own, but the only thing worse than doing this would be not releasing the sequel. And guess what happened? When Mankind Divided didn't reach Square Enix's ludicrously high sales expectations, perhaps partially due to their own decision to break the game into two parts rather than sell a complete story, they simply cancelled the second part. What's worse, they never officially announced this, players had to piece it together on their own once it became clear that, since Mankind Divided's final DLC release in 2017, not a single thing had been announced or released under the Deus Ex brand that Square had been so meticulously crafting over the past five years. Eidos Montreal moved on to other projects, assisting Crystal Dynamics with developing Shadow of the Tomb Raider in 2018, and the much-loathed Marvel's Avengers live service game in 2020, before releasing the positively received Guardians of the Galaxy game in 2021. Throughout this entire time, both Eidos Montreal and Square Enix stayed mum about the franchise that had once been thought to be their flagship, as a slow exodus of talent who had made up Eidos Montreal during the development of Human Revolution and Mankind Divided took place. Despite persistent outcry from fans of the series, it seemed inevitable that Deus Ex would die a second death. And that brings us to 2022, when Square Enix decided to sell off Eidos Montreal, Crystal Dynamics, and Square Enix Montreal to Embracer Group, who were busy buying up developers and consolidating under their singular ownership. With these studios came the IPs that they had worked on, including, of course, Deus Ex. For the first time in six years, fans of Deus Ex had hope again. If Square Enix wouldn't let Eidos Montreal create a new game, then maybe the more hands-off Embracer would. Validating these hopes, Jason Schreier reported in November of that year that a new Deus Ex was reportedly in extremely early development at Eidos Montreal. Fans waited patiently to hear more news about Deus Ex, which was very scant. Despite this, there was plenty of news about Embracer in the next two years. They seemed to be on a mission to acquire as many studios and IPs as possible, and in 2023, the reason became evident when they attempted to make a $2 billion deal with the Saudi Arabian-funded Savvy Games Group. But when that deal fell through at the last minute, and it was clear that they had taken on too much without that deal supporting them, Embracer began restructuring, a fancy corporate word for cancelling projects and laying off employees. Entire studios under the Embracer umbrella were closed, with Volition and Free Radical Design being particular victims. And finally, in January 2024, it was reported that Deus Ex and Eidos Montreal were the latest victims of Embracer's failed corporate greed. I'm not even joking when I say that I feel like there's been a hole in my heart, or maybe a consistent pit in my stomach, since this news broke. Deus Ex was more than just another game franchise to me. It was one of my favorites of all time. Aside from helping create and later modernize the immersive sim formula, it was an underrated but powerful look at a dystopian future controlled by governments and corporate oligarchies that had too much power for their own good. And ironically, this imagined future is becoming our reality and it's part of the reason why we don't have another Deus Ex game. This is a franchise that has fallen victim to corporate greed over and over again and it's so tiring to witness. Entertainment in general is being kept in a stranglehold by massive corporations that are becoming more and more brazen in expressing their naked avarice and callousness towards both the creatives who make them their money and the consumers who buy their products. We live in a world where writers and artists are being threatened with replacement by generative AI and have to fight tooth and nail just to make a livable wage as is. Entire films can be made and then not released, or worse, deleted entirely because they seem to be more beneficial as tax write-offs. Content is becoming lost media because the owners of those IPs are removing them from the only digital stores or streaming services that they were previously available on, in a cynical effort to avoid paying out royalties. I know I'm hardly the first person to point out that we're in the backslide of late-stage capitalism, and in the grand scheme of things, entertainment is a lesser victim of these circumstances. But I still think it's a perfect reflection of how bad things are getting, no matter how relatively unimportant the cancellation of a video game is. I'm somewhat interested in dissecting the possible reasons why Embracer cancelled Deus Ex in particular, because they honestly confuse me. Neither Embracer nor Eidos Montreal have officially announced the cancellation, because technically the game itself was never announced in the first place. So we're left to speculation. The obvious answer is that this was never targeted at Deus Ex specifically, and that just got cold in Embracer's ongoing efforts to cut costs. This makes sense in the short term, but not really in the long term. Embracer does still want to be a game publisher, right? And I'd imagine that part of the appeal of buying a large and prestigious company like Eidos Montreal was based in its ability to create a new game in the Deus Ex series, you know, the franchise that the studio is most associated with. 
It's an investment, sure, but given how corporations nowadays treat old IPs as the be-all, end-all of entertainment, wouldn't it have been a safer bet to just continue development on a known franchise than start work on a new IP, which is apparently what Eidos Montreal is now doing? I'm not saying by any means that a new Deus Ex game should have been made entirely because of cynical business reasons. Nobody wants that. I'm only saying, looking at it from this perspective, that seems like the path that makes the most sense, at least to me. But what do I know? I'm not a businessman. I'm just a fan speaking from a purely emotional level. As much as I loathe Square Enix for the way they treated Deus Ex and Eidos Montreal, I honestly think I now hate Embracer Group more. At least under Squeenix, Deus Ex had a chance to flourish before its wings were abruptly clipped. Even when Mankind Divided sequel was cancelled, the employees at the company still got to keep their jobs and work on other projects. I think the cruelest possible thing that Embracer could have done, and indeed did, was give fans false hope. Hope that by default, they'd be better than Square Enix, which really shouldn't have been that hard because the bar was already on the floor. But they sank even lower, to the point where it's not unrealistic to worry about the futures of the studios under their purview. At this point, the best I can hope for is that Embracer sells off the larger studios and publishers they own before they get liquidated. They're already selling Saber Interactive and all the studios under them, and are considering doing the same with Gearbox Software. One can only hope the same might happen to Eidos, because they deserve much better owners than Embracer. In the days following the cancellation report, there was an outpouring of grief by fans of the series who were hoping that Embracer would rescue the franchise, only to instead find their worst fears confirmed. Most prolific among these fans was Elias Tufexis, the voice actor for Adam Jensen, protagonist of the Eidos Montreal Deus Ex games. Tufexis has publicly stated before that he's a big fan of the series, and was passionate about its story, wanting to see it conclude just as badly as everyone else who had played and loved Mankind Divided. When the cancellation news broke, Tufexis wrote that he was disappointed, but ultimately not surprised at this turn of events, and expressed his opinion that the new game was unlikely to have been a story about Jensen anyway, since he hadn't been contacted by Eidos Montreal at any point during its two-year development. Whether this is true or not is impossible to know, and honestly, I don't know if believing it makes me feel any better or worse about the situation. On the one hand, I and many others think that finishing Jensen's story would have made the most logical sense for a new game, so the fact that a title that had nothing to do with him might have been cancelled could be a relief. On the other hand, I'm angry that a new Deus Ex game was cancelled at all, even if it didn't meet my personal ideal vision of a follow-up to Mankind Divided. A few days later, Tufexis took to Reddit and wrote a really nice, heartfelt post, thanking fans for support and saying goodbye to Adam Jensen. He said that Jensen was a character who was near and dear to his heart, and who most people associate Tufexis with, something he was just fine with. He also took a moment to express his anger at the treatment of the Eidos Montreal staff and the state of the video game industry in general, calling it a disaster zone in a later tweet. And while this was intended as a goodbye, Tufexis also expressed hope that it wasn't going to be a farewell, and that perhaps Jensen's story could one day be concluded, perhaps in a different format, if someone else buys the license. All things considered, this was a great tribute to Adam Jensen by the person who helped make the character so iconic to begin with, and I really like it. The only part of this statement that I don't like is Tufexis' suggestion as to who could buy off the IP. This was probably a joke, but I say this with zero hyperbole. I would rather watch Deus Ex die multiple undignified deaths because of uncaring publishers before ever seeing it fall into the hands of a man who I can most accurately describe as being real-life Bob Page. That is truly the most dystopian fate I can imagine for the franchise. Tufexis Lair gave a follow-up interview to PC Games End where he talked some more about Deus Ex and the state of the games industry. Notably, it was in this interview where he revealed that Eidos Montreal hadn't contacted him or given him any information since 2016 about any potential follow-up to Mankind Divided. In fact, the only time he's been contacted by them since was in 2020, when the studio asked him to stop talking about Deus Ex because they want to move on to different projects, which might indicate that the relationship between Tufexis and Eidos Montreal may have deteriorated. Then again, we don't know the details for sure, and this was back when Eidos Montreal was still under Square Enix's thumb, so maybe they were the ones who mandated sending this request. Again, it's impossible to know for sure. All I know is, uh, fuck Embracer. I hope their shitty business ventures collapse, and that the talented studios under their umbrella get sold to better owners. More importantly, I hope that the employees who were let go from Eidos Montreal will land on their feet, and the same sentiment goes towards any developers affected by these mass layoffs that have been happening in 2024. I'm not gonna lie, it feels a little hopeless being a Deus Ex fan right now. I'd go so far as to say that I currently have more faith in the Half-Life franchise continuing than in Deus Ex, and that should say a lot on its own. I do think it's possible that the series will return one day. Maybe in a decade, whoever their current owners are will decide to reboot it a second time. But as for Adam Jensen's story, I think this is officially the nail in the coffin. 
I had some speculative videos that I want to make that I now think are a little pointless. I was going to do one evaluating the pros and cons of whether or not to remake the original Deus Ex, which was something that some fans were hoping for in lieu of a Mankind Divided sequel. I want to compare the legacy of Deus Ex and Eidos Montreal with that of Dishonored and Arcane, who are also currently suffering from creative setbacks. But I'm afraid that if I dive too deep into it, I'm not going to have any optimism for the future of Immersive Sims, and I really want to, no matter how unrealistic that might be. So, in the spirit of doing something that I hope against hope will have even a tiny bit of an impact, I'm going to end this video with a small call to action. On the day that this video goes live, March 14th, Deus Ex Mankind Divide will be free to keep on the Epic Games Store. If you have an account, you can add to your library at no cost and it's yours forever. If you don't have an account, make one, it's easy. Epic gives away games all the time, so you'd definitely be able to get more in the bargain anyway. Maybe if Mankind Divide gets an uptick in downloads, it'll show Embracer that the series is something worth investing in. Also, it's just a really excellent game and deserves more love. This promotion will last until March 21st, so try and get it while you can. And even if you're watching this video after that date, the entire series goes on sale for ridiculously cheap all the time on Steam, GOG, and Epic, so I think it's worth picking up anyway. I really don't like the idea of giving Embracer more money, but these are great games and I think buying them sends more of a message than attempting a very specific digital boycott of them. Anyway, that's about all I have to say. Rest in peace, Deus Ex. Yeah, rip. <sighs> what a shame. It was a good series. What a rotten way to die.